Hey my friends and welcome to my lecture on Fourier transform for periodic signals. This session is very simple and at the same time super important. What I'm going to cover today essentially forms the foundation for the next lecture on sampling. Sampling basically enables us to go from the continuous to discrete domain. Sampling to me is the most fundamental block of digital signal processing. So before going to the next lecture, please make sure you fully get this session. As we learned before, for periodic signals to travel from time to the frequency domain, we should use Fourier series. And for non-periodic signals, we should use Fourier transform. But here is the fun part. A non-periodic signal can be considered periodic when the period or t is infinity. To clarify that, consider this periodic signal. The period here is 2 as the same pattern repeats every 2 units. Now consider the same pattern but with the period of 4. Again, imagine the same pattern but with the period of 6. So as t increases, the distance between boxes would increase. Now let's assume the period is infinity. This means the boxes will repeat at infinity. This suggests a non-periodic signal can be considered periodic when t is infinity. This simple assumption which intuitively makes sense will help us to find the relation between Fourier transform and Fourier series. Here's my logic. Fourier transform is generally applied to non-periodic signals which can be considered as periodic signals where t is infinity. The periodic signals are presented using Fourier series in the frequency domain. This simple chain suggests there is a relation between Fourier transform and Fourier series. Now let's find that relation. Let's assume xt is periodic and the period is t. This means the fundamental frequency is 2 pi divided by t. Based on my lecture on Fourier series, a periodic signal can be represented as a linear combination of complex exponential functions where ck is the weight for each frequency. Now assume xt is given. The question is, what is the Fourier transform of xt? From the Fourier transform table which I already covered, we know Fourier transform of 1 is 2 pi multiplied by delta omega. As we learned from the table of properties, when xt is multiplied by a complex exponential function, x omega gets shifted by omega naught. So, if we multiply 1 by this complex function in the time domain, we just need to shift the frequency content by k omega naught. If we multiply this signal by a constant, let's say ck in the time domain, the frequency content gets multiplied by the same constant 2. A linear combination of this multiplication in the time domain results in a linear combination in the frequency domain. Now look at this one carefully. This is basically xt. What does that mean? It means if xt is periodic, the Fourier transform can be simply derived using this expression where ck is the weight for each frequency. ck can be found using this integral as we discussed in the Fourier series lecture. Done. So to find Fourier transform for a periodic signal, First you need to find ck using this integral and then you need to replace ck here. It's super simple. Example. Consider this periodic signal where the period is 4. The question is what is the Fourier transform of this signal? As we just learned, the first step is to find ck using this integral where omega naught is 2 pi over t or simply pi over 2. Let's replace t in the integral by 4. The interval is over one period, let's say from minus 2 to 2. But in this interval, the signal is non-zero, just from minus 1 to 1, where xt is 1. So, the integral will be simplified to this. I'm replacing omega naught by this value. I already solved this integral in the Fourier series lecture. If you don't know how to do it, please watch that lecture again. Here's the final answer. The top expression is true when k is not 0 and the below is valid for k equal to 0. 
We are done with the first step. The second step to find the Fourier transform is to replace CK here. As we have two expressions for K, not zero and equal to zero, let's break the sigma into two terms. Omega naught is pi divided by two. C naught is one half, and CK for all other Ks is this. Let's replace them here. Two is canceled by two, and pi is canceled by pi. Here's the final answer. Next example. Consider this periodic signal. The question is, what is the Fourier transform? This example is very easy and super important as I will use it in the next lecture to explain sampling. To solve this, first let's expand the sigma. Here's what we get. Lot of terms plus a delta function when k is minus 2 plus a delta when k is minus 1 plus a delta when k is 0 plus a delta when k is 1 plus a delta when k is 2 and so on. This is xt. Let's plot this function. We have a delta function at the origin, a delta at t, a delta at minus t, a delta at 2t, and a delta at minus 2t, and so on. In the signal processing books, this is so-called impulse train, as it's like a train of impulses one after another. It's clear that the period here is t, as the impulse repeats every t units. To find Fourier transform, the first step is to find ck using this integral. The interval is over one period, let's say from minus t divided by 2 to t divided by 2. Over this period, the signal is zero everywhere except at the origin. So xt is simply a delta function at the origin. As we have a delta function here, we can use the sifting property which I already covered in the elementary signals lecture. As delta is just non-zero at the origin, we just need to replace t by zero. Exponential power zero is one. So the integral itself is simply one and ck becomes one over t. The second step to find Fourier transform is to replace ck here. Ck is 1 over t. Therefore, the Fourier transform of the impulse train is simply this. Let's go over the example again. If xt is an impulse train in the time domain, its Fourier transform is an impulse train in the frequency domain. Just we have this scaling factor in the frequency domain. Let's plot the example to fully get it. Here's the impulse train in the time domain where the period is t. Now let's look at the signal in the frequency domain. To do that, let's expand this sigma for different values of k. For example, k equal to 0, 1, 2, and a lot of other terms, plus k is minus 1, minus 2, and a lot of other terms. If we plot this, we get this impulse train where the distance between impulses is omega naught. Also, we need to multiply each delta by this constant. Again, to recap the example, this simply means the Fourier transform of an impulse train in the time domain is an impulse train. I will use this example in the next lecture on sampling. Okay, that's all I want to say for this lecture. Also, I just want to apologize for publishing this video with a huge delay. During the last few months, a lot of stuff happened in my life and I was not able to work on my channel. Thank you very much for your patience and support. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next lecture, which is the last lecture of the frequency chapter. Cheers.